Hi guys and welcome to Nara Archi channel. I'm Celine. I'm here to help you becoming an architect. And before we start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to like the videos. So today we're going to talk about originality in architectural projects. You may have noticed that many uh, buildings seem like other ones and uh, it's hard for an architect to design buildings like nobody else. So in this video I will share with you the examples of Frangeri, Remkulas and Kengokuma, the way I think uh, they design the buildings to help you being inspired by these examples. So let's start now. The first method to design a project like nobody else is to experiment forms like from Gary. For example, you, you can use the models to experiment your, your project. You can use collage. You can even uh, use some drawings to experiment some forms. It's a kind of intuitive work. If you are more an intellectual person, maybe this method is not for you. As an example, we can talk about the Louis Vuitton foundation that Frank Gehry designed in 2014. If you know this project, you may have seen that Frank Gehry has made a lot of drawing to design this. Uh, he experimented by making a lot of models and at the end he obtained in this building a lightness effect and the glass panels look like some sails. But here is the difficulty, in fact, in this method, is, at the big, is that at the beginning, you can have a strong concept, you can have a really innovative form for a project, but you have to keep it from the beginning to the end. So you have to be good in techniques so that you can keep your concept uh, as it was in the beginning. Method number two is to analyze the world like Remkolas does. You know, architecture is not just about uh, building some construction. Architecture is a reflection of our civilization, the way people live. And Remkulas is a great thinker as an architect and uh, a very known theorist who has studied uh, the relationship between the architectural changes and historic events. And in a masterclass, he said that uh, the Kunsthalle Museum, which, which is a really famous museum he designed in 1992, in fact represented a kind of manifesto for a new Europe. Indeed, at this time, when he was designing this building, uh, you know that in 1989 uh, Berlin's Wall fell. And after that, there was the Treaty of Maastricht, who created what we call today the European Union. And so, Rem Kulas thought about a way to express this idea of a wall like the European Union, but a wall uh, composed of some fragments. And you can see that, in fact, the Kunsthalle Museum is composed uh, of a square in a plan, but this square is much more complex uh, as it seems from the exterior. You can see when you are looking at some plants or when you visit the building, but in fact it's composed of, of four parts. Four parts that seem autonomous, but in fact uh, from a stair to another, these four parts are not really uh, divided. Sometimes they communicate with one, of, one another. And by this architectural system, he expressed the thing that European Union is composed of many countries, many cultures that communicate with one another. Now, method number three used by Ken Gokuma is to take inspiration from the past. As architects, as human beings, we are all coming from a region, from a country, with a culture, uh, with some vernacular architecture, with some architectural principles. And so, Kengo Kuma is really influenced by his culture, the Japanese culture. And uh, since the beginning, when he started to work, he wanted to adapt the principles of traditional Japanese architecture in nowadays. 
If we take as an example the Prosto Museum Research Center, we can find some principles of Japanese architecture, like this ambiguity between uh, the interior and the exterior with uh, this facade, which is quite immaterial. And also, we can find it construction techniques. You see, the facade is composed by an assembly of wood elements and they are fixed together without any nails or metal fittings. And this is a characteristic of Japanese uh, technique construction. Moreover, this facade, in fact, is inspired by an old Japanese toy, which is called the Sidori. And the principle of this toy is to assemble some wood elements together. So this video is finished. I hope it will inspire you for your future works. I remind you that I've created a new learning platform where you can find more detailed courses. Also, you can join the newsletter if you want more articles about architecture and architects. And uh, you can join also the Facebook group Be an Architect if you are a student, an ambitious student who wants to become an architect. So I'm leaving you now, guys, and I see you in the next course. Bye!